Okay, it's time. So welcome everyone to the last interactive session uh, delivered by Alex and Fer. Uh, so this is probably the longest title of the entire EuroPython 2021. The title is The Pattern Machine Learning Natural Language Processing Meets VRAR. And then there's a subtitle, Deploy Large NLP Models, Create Knowledge Graph and Build New Types of Interfaces. And in this session, Alex and Vera will walk us through three machine learning NLP pipelines within one hour. So that is a lot to cover. And that means I should not eat into this one hour session. Take away, Alex and Ver. Um, thank you, Raquel. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, the pattern is the open source project, so uh, everything which we are going to show today is uh, open on GitHub. So if you wouldn't be able to follow the slides, uh, then there are code references. Um, in agenda, we are not going to talk about virtual reality and augmented reality part uh, of the project because it's JavaScript based and we are in EuroPython conference. But there is a talk on uh, RedisConf 2021, which is covers how to build uh, virtual reality or augmented reality using FreeJS uh, out of Redis Graph. And uh, as you can see in the agenda, we are going to cover Redis, Redis AI, Redis Gears, uh, Modulus. Then uh, we'll overview of the simple natural language processing pipeline based on Redis Gears. And then we go deep dive into one of the more sophisticated uh, pipelines you can build natural language processing, uh, the Redis AI, Redis Gears. We do expect to overrun, and we booked an uh, open table CD walks room for the next hour. So we will be sticking around after uh, that session to answer any questions or query. Uh, about myself, my name is uh, Dr. Alexander Mikalev. Uh, I'm Geek and Data Architecture Team in Nationwide Building Society. Uh, this is my fun project, which I'm doing outside of my employment with full employment permission of Nationwide Building Society. Um, during daytime, I work on synthetic data, data privacy, and digital twins, but natural language processing, search engine, and uh, AI is my fun and passion. Over to you, Dvir. Uh, thank you, Alex. Hi, I'm uh, Dvir. I'm uh, for uh, the last uh, two, uh, almost two and a half years, I'm working uh, for uh, Redis Labs in the CTO team. Or it's called the Innovation or Incubation Team of uh, Redis Labs. Uh, currently, I'm working on the machine learning learning related or uh, AI related project, including the Redis AI. And previously I worked on uh, uh, during my first year, a year, year and a half in Redis Lab, I worked on the Redis Graph. And before that I uh, uh, did my uh, master on uh, the Technion. Uh, thank you. So uh, what is the problem? Um, in the beginning of uh, 2020, medical profession uh, met a new challenge um, where previously a number of publications on about COVID, uh, previously known as SARS-V virus, were about two per month. Uh, now they were facing uh, more than 300 plus articles uh, per, per day. And uh, uh, what uh, I'm trying to do is to build uh, a better tools uh, to help medics or other uh, knowledge management professionals to navigate uh, via such flow of information. Uh, that's why the project pattern was uh, born, to fight ever increasing complexity, help community to find relevant knowledge using artificial intelligence and novel user experience elements. It's all powered by Redis. Uh, there are no any other databases in the project uh, at all. So it's only Redis and Redis modules. Uh, to help kind of visualize what we mean uh, uh, and put a, a natural language processing machine learning pipelines in the context, I'm going to do a very quick demo. Yeah. 
Uh, so this is the demo server, the demo page. And uh, uh, the first thought is that different uh, roles of medical profession have a different requirements of working with information. Uh, where a medical student can be comfortable using mouse and the keyboard and have a nice uh, PC to have a three-dimensional visualization, or even we can make a step into virtual reality where you will be uh, ha hand waving information in uh, similar to minority report or Johnny mnemonic. Uh, so that's the interface we uh, propose for medical student. So it have a long uh, natural language processing uh, request uh, query and the output is three-dimensional graph uh, which um, is built on the premises of uh, that you want to uh, explore the information space uh, and the whole purpose of this uh, visualization is to highlight the hidden constructs yeah so for example the temperature is one of the super nodes and uh, so the nodes are the medical terms they map to universal medical dictionary the edges are the ob uh, observation of multiple those uh, medical terms uh, met in the uh, uh, in an article i'm going uh, to go into slightly more details uh, but the important point is uh, to highlight here uh, effect and faults came out of universal medical language system and uh, uh, this is the title and this is a summary which is built uh, by T5 uh, model. So you don't have to uh, read the whole article. AI can provide you a summary. Uh, and as you can see, I've uh, populated new articles for which uh, no summaries have been built. And uh, if we'll have enough time, we can cover the actual building of the summary. Uh, life coding, uh, very dangerous in the conference. Um, so, let me go back to my slides. Uh, that was a quick demo, and uh, we'll take it further. Foundation of it is Redis, uh, which stands for Remote Dictionary Server. And this is where uh, Dwir will take us through uh, what is Redis and the Redis model is. OK, so. Uh... In the next few slides, we're going to lay the foundations for the common knowledge that we need for the further slides in this talk. So we first need to understand what is Redis. So uh, Redis is an open source uh, in-memory data structure. Uh, mainly, we can uh, refer it as a key value database. Uh, and the usage are uh, either a primary database, a cache layer, a message broker. And it supports uh, several uh, data structures out of the box, such as, uh, as uh, strings, hashes, uh, lists, uh, sets. And you can have uh, you can you can execute uh, bitmaps, hyperlog logs, and geosubshell indexes operation, uh, as well as uh, as well as strings. Uh, so as I said before, uh, Redis is a key value, um, a key value basically database, uh, and its commands are uh, uh, the majority of its commands are referring to a command, a key, and value or multiple values. So in this uh, simple uh, example over here, the command is the first argument which is set. And the name of the key is key, and the value of the value is the string value. And the next command, that, sorry, can you uh, return back to the, the next command that we're going to execute is get uh, the key, and we're returning the, uh, we get back the string uh, value. This is important because uh, Alex is going to show you some uh, Redis commands being used in the next few slides. The other thing that we uh, need to, talk, to discuss about is uh, sharding, which also be demonstrated on the next slide, is how Redis is uh, scaling out. So uh, Redis is splitting, is, is actually sharding its data according to some hash slots. Uh, for a single instance Redis, 
uh, we get uh, 16,384 hash slots, where the keys are uh, mapped according to uh, uh, CRC16 uh, uh, function, hash function. Um, when we are uh, starting to, if we want to scale up or out, uh, we start to use uh, multiple instances of Redis in a cluster where each instance is responsible for a, a continuous range of hash slots, but uh, they are agnostic to, to each other. And in this example, we see that we can uh, get uh, a key, a key hash slot by getting, by running the command cluster t slot. And we can uh, tag different keys uh, with the same hashtag, and we will get the same hash slot for both of the keys. Okay, this is ready uh, in one moment, in one minute. And next thing that we're going to discuss about is uh, Redis modules. So uh, we can uh, refer Redis modules as uh, extensions or plugins for Redis that uh, uh, extend its functionality. Uh, regarding the operations that uh, they can they can perform, uh, they can expose their own data structures and their own commands, but they still run on Redis and they still uh, enjoying Redis capabilities uh, for in-memory and using Redis uh, infrastructure itself for uh, communication, persistency, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so now we're going to. Uh, describes some of the modules that uh, Alex has used in, in, in his project. Uh, the first one is uh, Redis Graph. Uh, Redis Graph it's, uh, is, is a property graph database where the entities are nodes and relationships. And each entity has its own property. Uh, it, it implements the OpenCypher query language where we have an example uh, written over here. Um, that uh, we want we want to return uh, every people that a person named Tom knows in a distance of one to three hops from him, and we get this illustration on the right hand side, uh, which is the query uh, the query output uh, pre presented in a in a in a graphical manner. Uh, under the hood, we uh, we're using Graph Plus which is uh, for this traversal, for those kinds of traversal, we, graph traversals we're using Graph Plus, which is a linear al algebra library for uh, sparse matrices uh, multiplication. And of course it is, uh, again, a Redis module. It's a plugin for Redis. Next one, we have uh, Redis AI. Uh, Redis AI is a, a Redis module that uh, uses exposing a new data structure, uh, which, are, which is a tensor. Uh, the data type uh, and actually enabling uh, deep uh, deep and machine learning uh, model execution on uh, CPU and GPU. Uh, so it uh, actually makes Redis uh, like an inference server for uh, uh, several uh, machine learning uh, framework. Uh, so what uh, what is going on inside Redis AI? Uh, next is is that uh, Redis AI is embedding uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Onyx Runtime uh, framework for uh, model execution. And it also supports uh, Torch script for uh, script execution in, for PyTorch. And it supports uh, multiple devices, uh, CPU and GPU. And it gets uh, tensors as input and returns them in, uh, as output. Uh, of uh, each one of the uh, uh, those frameworks that we support. And uh, next, uh, Redis Gears. Redis Gears is uh, uh, a module that uh, um, exposes a serverless engine a capability uh, for multi-model and cluster operation of uh, Redis. And it supports events or batch operation. And it's, it is agnostic to how you run Redis. If you run it on a standalone instance or a cluster or 
what we offer in Redis Labs, which is an enterprise cluster. Uh, it has built-in coordinator for the cluster support under the hood. Uh, we will see it in the next slide. It has built-in map reduce operations uh, and uh, it charts the data however, however we need it uh, regarding, the, regarding the execution. So this illustration in the red rectangle, we see the underlying core of Redis Gears where it has the cluster management, uh, where it knows how to, where and how to run uh, uh, your functions that you register or recipe, how, this is how we call them. It has the execution manager, which actually schedule the functions, the functions execution, and map reduce functionality. Above everything, uh, we have a CAPI that uh, we can register uh, Execution support, uh, sorry, uh, we support uh, uh, registering functioning, uh, function execution in a C. And we got uh, Python bindings for this. So we support uh, actually submitting the Python script uh, with Redis Gears capabilities, with Redis Gears API. And that involves also uh, whatever library that you need in uh, Python. So uh, both uh, myself and Mayer, which is the architect of our team, had the pleasure to support Alex uh, in his uh, project. And uh, we are happy for this. And I return it back to Alex. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dvir. Uh, as you can see, I just used Redis uh, is a uh, um, uh, is a tongue in the cheek because I used half of the models of the Redis capabilities. And one of the bit uh, which we uh, uh, mention is uh, that uh, it supports Python, it supports Java, and there are maybe other languages coming. Uh, and I think Redis gives this absolutely amazing uh, model for data scientists. So um, it's in memory storage. Uh, horizontally scalable if it's a uh, Redis cluster, with data sharding in build, uh, processing of data on data without need to move it and out. And it's like Spark on Hadoop, uh, uh, except it's data processed intelligently. Uh, and uh, above all, it's actually quite small. So Redis in cluster mode with Redis Gears and Python uh, consumes about 20 megabytes of uh, RAM. And think how much more data you can process uh, if your underlying infrastructure is memory efficient. So um, to explain what you saw in the demo, what, where those nodes uh, came from, uh, I have to explain a bit how to uh, build knowledge graph, how to turn text into knowledge graph. And this is the foundation of the first pipeline, which is using one of the oldest uh, natural language processing uh, algorithm, which is Aha Karasik uh, Automata. Uh, so uh, I assume that when you're writing a text, there are two concepts which are related to in each other. And uh, uh, the point of the, all this uh, processing is that I want not uh, strings in my search results, but I want things as medical community will understand them. Uh, and that's where I map concepts to concept unified identifier uh, in uh, external medical uh, dictionary. And that's the step two, as you can see, it's a, a concept and map to concept identifiers. And then uh, uh, two concept identifiers are related in a sentence. And here is example on lowest level, how it looks like. Yeah, so there is a, a concept identifier, which is a transmission. And there is a concept of identifier, which actually means birth. And there is a sentence which connects them together, uh, a rate of transmission in infant born, as you can see, uh, uh, the stemming and the rest of the things happen automatically. And uh, then it's all stored in uh, Redis graph. So this is a way of turning a, a bunch of text into the knowledge graph. And this is the simplest pipeline, uh, which is in the pattern project. It's the first pipeline I built about a year ago as a part of Redis Hackathon uh, 2020. 
Uh, so the input is the Core 19 documents. Uh, it's a Kaggle competition uh, uh, data set, which was released in the beginning of 2020. Uh, it contains about 50,000 uh, JSON documents in different languages. Uh, and some of them were not spelled check. I mean, uh, some of them were OCR into JSON. And that's why the steps are, uh, we create the streams, we pass it through language detect, uh, spell checker, then we split it into paragraphs, and then we feed it into the uh, Redis graph. And then uh, I have a Flask API, uh, which allows to query uh, graph API. Uh, as I mentioned, it's all runs inside Redis gears. So all those steps are fairly small, uh, tiny uh, Python uh, uh, scripts, which then scale uh, using the Redis graphs uh, across uh, all shards. Uh, obviously, there is a, a pre-step, which is uh, I read all the MLS tables, and then I build automata, and then the matcher uh, runs uh, automatic, automata matching inside of the Redis gears and produces streams, which then saved in the Redis graphs. So that's the simplest pipeline. And now we are going to uh, talk a bit about uh, modern state-of-the-art machine learning models. Uh, if you're a data scientist or initial language processing community, you obviously heard about uh, BERT bidirectional encoder representation from transformers. It's the uh, machine learning model which created by researchers at Google and language. It's state of the art in variety NLP tasks, including question answering, uh, next sentence prediction, uh, text summarization, text classification, and many more. And there is a link to the good write-up on, uh, on the blog uh, towards data science. Uh, what we are going to use their models today is a question answering. And there are other machine learning models which are already superseding there, but at least this one I could deploy. Um, so query processing and the Flask API uh, call exa use exactly the same Ahakarasic matcher which I used on Redis gears. Uh, so overall query processing, the one which you saw me doing uh, on a demo server where I hit uh, how does COVID uh, impact uh, uh, transmission is uh, it goes via Flask API. It goes via the same Ahakarasic matcher which turn text into nodes, then it fetches uh, nodes and edges from Redis graph, and then uh, uh, it fetches list of title and edges and kicks off two more pipelines. Uh, one of them is a pipeline number three, which is a summary pipeline, which can be very easily calculated offline. And another one is the most complicated one is the uh, question answering. So it fetches answer and the role which I haven't demonstrated, uh, the nurse role, uh, have a completely different interface because the assumption is that nurse as a medical profession who uh, interacts with customer prefer not to touch keyboard and uh, uh, prefer uh, to listen to the answer rather than read it. Uh, so the question answering pipeline manifests itself for nurse uh, not only in uh, advanced uh, interface uh, which is using um, hand tracking sensor, uh, but also in uh, text to speech uh, where the answer is uh, read back uh, to the nurse. Uh, and that's where uh, we are using a lot of the uh, modern Redis gears, Redis AI capabilities. Uh, and the pipeline works is like, if uh, the key is not present uh, in the response, if we haven't searched uh, for uh, that particular uh, question, it will run the whole their question answering machine learning uh, models uh, on uh, uh, each preloaded shard, and then uh, it will return an answer and it will cache this answer. Uh, so uh, just to reiterate, yeah, so we have a question and we have a Flask API which queries the Redis graph. And then it produces results and check if we already have um, a key on a particular shard. If the key is missing, uh, it captures key miss event and uh, it starts the pipeline where it tokenizes, appends uh, 
uh, question to the list of potential answers. Uh, and then it runs uh, their question answer in inference and then stores uh, answer on Redis shard. So the next hit, if user hits refresh button, is returned in millisecond, uh, under one millisecond, um, because that's uh, how Redis uh, Labs team likes to, uh, their uh, Redis to perform uh, under two milliseconds. Uh, but the first run probably will take about uh, slightly over the second, because uh, there is another optimization which I apply uh, where all potential answers are pre-tokenized using Redis gears. So the most advanced code initial language processing pipeline looks like this. Yeah, so it queries uh, uh, carefully constructed uh, key in Redis, and then it returns uh, an answer. And that's the most complicated uh, uh, code in the pipeline. Any questions? To be fair, that's what actually happening in background. And you can follow the code on the GitHub. It probably will be easier in, than in presentation. Uh, so get built. This is the shard ID. This is the uh, article ID. This is another shard ID. Uh, and this is the sentence ID. And that's where, uh, and this is the question. Uh, so that query is third question answering uh, on shard, where is the key of the pre-tokenized tensor, potential answer. Uh, so going back to how the machine learning model work for uh, question answering is it can return your potential answer if you give it a list of variables. Yeah? So uh, we have to fetch the articles, we have to fetch uh, sentences which may be related to the answer, then feed it into Redis AI uh, per question answering machine, uh, and then uh, we cache the response. And uh, it uses a lot of uh, Redis gears and Redis AI magic. So uh, the actual KMIS uh, function in Redis gears uh, registered like this, and you can see that it is listening for KMIS type events in uh, 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 on prefix their question answering and the command is get. But the important point is mod async local. Uh, what it means is that uh, this function is distributed on all shards of the Redis cluster. And if you run it locally, it will run perfectly. If you run it on a high performance server, how I'm doing it right now, it will uh, distribute across uh, 20, mm, all CPUs or as many shards as you specified. And then it runs uh, uh, get tensor from key, create model runner, create tensor from blob, model runner add input, model runner async, in, and all of it done in non blocking main thread mode. So, what it means that if you want to take your machine learning models into production, that you can be sure that your uh, Redis instance continues serving other customers while heavy lifting machine learning model uh, performs uh, its heavy lifting and then returns the uh, result which we cache instantly. Uh, and this is the uh, how simple the uh, KMIS function is. Uh, it's just effectively uh, constructing cache then uh, again, using async away construct spins up the query, and then uh, it overrides a uh, reply to make sure that we return result into the same client. Next pipeline is a uh, uh, way simpler. Uh, so summarization pipeline is using Google T5 text-to-text uh, -text transfer uh, uh, transformer model for summarization. Uh, and it all runs just uh, using Redis gears uh, because uh, the difficulty of question answering model was we could not pre tokenize and pre calculate question. We pre tokenized uh, and pre uh, answers, but we could not pre calculate questions because we don't know them up front. Uh, the summarization is actually way easier because we can tokenize the whole text. 
uh, we can then store the output in uh, ready set and then we can uh, run uh, T5 uh, inference on instance div uh, GPU uh, or div uh, CPU. Here has a question, Alex. Uh, go on. I'm. Uh, uh, yes. I'm. Uh, it's my last meaningful slide. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, so the. So do you, uh, right. I can read the question. So the question is. Uh, so hi. So Redis AI uses transformers under the hood, or do they have their own similar implementation? Uh, so so uh, Redis AI is inference server. I put transformer models into that. And one of the comments which uh, Dvir mentioned me before the talk that I forgot to mention that I preload uh, Redis machine learning models into Redis AI uh, as a part of the start of the script. Yeah. So um, I think there is a um, bit which. Uh, is apparent if you run the code, but not apparent if you talk about it. Uh, so um, Redis Gears is good for data scientists, but you need to deploy specific configuration. And I'm going slightly on the tangent there because for Redis uh, uh, Gears to be productive, you have to deploy uh, Redis in the cluster mode with high availability. So each master have its own slate because uh, what, uh, I'm doing when I'm populating, populating a Redis Gears function, I'm attaching libraries like PyTorch, transformers, downloading the, uh, those libraries, then uh, converting them into uh, Redis AI, which uh, uh, the can uh, enlighten you more. Uh, and then I push it all on shards. Uh, all those actually, mm, they are not small libraries. Yeah, uh, they are two gigabyte and more. Uh, so while they are going to be populated, the cluster have to remain stable, and that's why you need the high availability. Uh, so, Tavir, do you want to talk about preloading machine learning models into Redis AI? Yeah, well, Redis AI is just, you know, just a inference server. It, it's not. It, it does not. It's not holding any any uh, predefined models or capabilities. So you just you just need to either freeze or export or uh, trace uh, the model that you want to deploy, depend on your platform, on your uh, framework that you want to use, and just uh, store it on uh, on Redis AI. And, uh, and from from here, uh, you would just uh, need to execute it on the up, on the on the input on the inputs that you that you want. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for question. Uh, any more questions? When I'm presenting, I don't see them. Sorry. I don't see them at the moment, but if anybody else has any question, feel free to put them in the chat. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, as I said, it's all open source. Uh, join uh, us on uh, GitHub. We have a live demo server. Uh, you can join our team on Discord and uh, there are other uh, collateral, which we can point, um, I can point to you uh, to uh, talk more about it. And uh, uh, if you want, we can actually do live coding demo. Raquel, uh, do you want us to code? Uh, uh, yeah. I, I've, I've already done for time. Yeah, so we are like uh, really quick. No, no, you you have you have almost a whole half an hour left, right? Uh, yes, that's the timing. I, I think we went so quickly. <laughs> so go ahead to the live demo. Right. Uh, okay. So um, um, this is a Redis instance. Uh, this is a sharding uh, Redis instance. And this is exactly uh, what I uh, thought. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it have uh, quite a few keys, but uh, if we'll check that. Uh, uh, then you can see that uh, I tested a few uh, queries before. Um, what we can do is we can uh, uh, run a per question answering model. Um, 
or we can uh, populate more. Uh, so I think one of the really nice things about uh, Redis gears on Redis AI, uh, you can see uh, the load is actually pretty even. Uh, so at no point uh, uh, it balancing the load of the server uh, pretty nicely. So uh, before the talk, I uh, submitted about 10,000 articles into the pipeline and uh, um, uh, it's still processing it, but at the same time, I managed to demonstrate it. Uh, so uh, these are uh, Redis graph, Redis, uh, uh, um, Redis plus Redis graph uh, instance, which acts as a front end. And uh, this one is uh, Redis gears, Redis AI uh, model, which acts as a computational cluster. Uh, and uh, Currently, they are single on my demo server, but you can uh, scale uh, Redis gears on, uh, uh, for example, using the Redis Enterprise, or you can, uh, uh, did I, I continue sharing that, can I? And you, you can see what I'm talking about, yeah, I presume? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, so uh, Raquel, do you want to uh, come up with a query? It will not necessarily will produce results, but we'll show the, um, the calculation. Yeah. Let's go uh, with your favorite query. What is that? Uh, my favorite query is already pre-computed, so it's not, it's not interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a list of queries, which were, um, so effectiveness of work, uh, Inter travel restrictions. The challenge if I'll hit any of those queries, they're going to be pre computed. So uh, we'll see it appearing uh, in the cache. Uh, so uh, I, I would like rather handcrafted is um, um, I think we had some really humorous one when we were testing it, uh, uh, like horse uh, and, and horse, uh, B. Uh, so uh, it will not produce any meaningful answer because uh, I'm feeding completely wrong um, uh, article into it, uh, but it will um, run machine learning model and it actually produced an answer, <laughs> which I can't believe. Hmm. Uh, so uh, it run, uh, um, as you can see, it's just, uh, 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 down case uh, the response and return it. Uh, so to be fair, that's the empty return from the question answering model, but we know it actually worked in the background and cached the response. So uh, you can trigger whole really complicated Redis gears, Redis uh, uh, graph, uh, uh, Redis AI pipeline, just producing the query like that. And think about, um, uh, uh, APIs, yeah. So your API uh, complexity becomes very simple because the only thing it does, it uh, goes into Redis. Um, uh, yeah, I think interactive session, uh, is anything else we can show? Uh, is anything else uh, people would like to see? I will type that into the chat, but... If there is anything people want to see, please just comment now if you don't want to join the Zoom room. Um, okay. Ah, ah, we have a... Uh, um, ah, I see, we have a matrix chat. Yes. Oops. Shall we crash it? Yeah, just for fun. Mm. Right. 
Right, so we have a question from Francesco. And the question is, could you please cl clarify again how you chose the context for running BART QA and retrieve answers to your questions? Oh, uh, OK, that's, that's good. Uh, right, let me uh, um, go back to slide, right? So the context is chosen by uh, running this pipeline, yeah? So uh, we're going uh, through Matcha, yeah? We get a uh, nodes and uh, uh, probably will be equally easier just to point it on, uh, uh, on the demo, right? So let's run the query. Um, One, two, three, four. It doesn't have any answer. No, it does. It's just uh, uh, a bit sluggish. So um, the context for per QA is literally the same as you can see in front of the screen on the pop-up. Yeah. Except when you are uh, when we are in exploration mode, you see uh, a lot of nodes uh, for bird question answering. Uh, I go for like top uh, top five uh, most ranked nodes, and then I fetch the corresponding sentences for them. And then uh, uh, the sentences are fed into Bert QA as a potential answer. Uh, you can do it uh, out of the box using uh, Transformers library. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, the challenge of using Transformers library is that uh, you, you have to tokenize both uh, question and answer in one go, and then you have to run an inference on it. Uh, what is difficult about it, if you want to build any uh, step towards production level user experiences, there needs to be optimizations. And that's where I try to uh, leverage Redis as much as possible to uh, produce a lot of optimizations, pre tokenizing answers, and then using um, Redis AI and Redis Gears to tokenize uh, questions separately and then uh, effectively concatenate them and then run inference. Yeah. So the reason why it's uh, uh, closer to one second, not close to two or 15 seconds. So if you'll run off the shelf, uh, uh, of the shell transformer model on like five articles, uh, it will take you at least uh, seven seconds. And the funny thing is, even if you have a GPU enabled instance, your GPU will not be loaded for more than 30%. That's why it's important to do steps like data sharding, data distribution, pre tokenization of the text, because for images, you don't need that step. Yeah, uh, images already uh, uh, already numbers, so you can use uh, Ready CI directly. For natural language processing, you have to think about the, uh, well, what are the steps required to recognize them. And um, I can go uh, if if people are interested, I can go into how the Aha Karasik actually works or the. Um, the challenge of relevance. So one of the challenges uh, that, so does it answer the question first? I do believe Francesco was pretty happy with the answer, but you can go ahead and right. elaborate more, yeah. Uh, so um, there are a few things which we uh, can talk uh, a bit more. Uh, so why do we need roles? Um, if, so my purpose of building first pipeline was to uh, leverage industry knowledge. Uh, there is a universal medical language system, which is maintained by US government. And it's a huge dictionary, uh, which is mapping all terms and all variations to what it actually means. Uh, but if you open the uh, tables, look under the hood, bleeding 
not normalized word bleeding means 11,000 different things to medics. Uh, and that's where I think uh, the roles and the relevance should be dynamic. Uh, and that's why I assume that general practitioner or nurse are interested in uh, uh, these are uh, uh, semantic layers in uh, UMLS uh, taxonomy, anatomical structure, disease or syndrome, body part, organ or organ component or diagnostic procedure. Uh, so I'm trying to limit knowledge graph output only to those concepts uh, found in that semantic layer. Uh, in another bit, which I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give users the ability to mark the node, the concept as not important, and it will be filtered out of their output. Um, what's the difference between standard TF EDF or DM25 uh, time? Uh, term frequency inverse document frequency is that uh, you will never see that 11 uh, bleeding means 11,000 different things. Uh, you will see a top five ranked by the uh, medical dictionary. And that's where all current uh, national language processing tools or searches, they drive you towards the most frequent, uh, most desired um, input where uh, what I wanted to be able for people to do is to actually go and check the evolution of the concepts. And if I'll manage uh, to get rid of this thing is, so um, one of the uh, features, which is uh, uh, I think quite cool, but uh, is that there is a slider which shows you how the terms, how your search query evolved over time. And for me, that was very, although it's a tiny uh, feature, uh, for me, it was very important because it allows to show that our language and our communication uh, evolves uh, over time. And uh, uh, the driver of uh, uh, next step would be to turn it all into a mixed reality experience and you can go uh, travel forward and backward in time but software is not there. So I managed to get some of the hardware working, uh, but uh, getting hand tracking sensors working with WebR proved to be um, quite uh, um, challenging experience. And um, another bit which I uh, wanted to touch on is uh, um, we talk about uh, knowledge graphs, graph databases, uh, GraphQL, RDF, REST, SparkQL, uh, and uh, other uh, things. And we constantly mix uh, different concepts. Uh, I think one of the messages I would like to highlight is knowledge graph is what you store, uh, what to write, things and not strings. I really like that uh, derivative. Uh, graph databases, where you write, and read it from. And uh, SparkQL, for example, how do you query that? Um, they may not be interrelated, but I talk to people who are constantly uh, mix those concepts and I'd like to uh, bring this side of knowledge up. Right. Um, the traditional uh, open domain uh, question answering architecture will look very similar to the one uh, which we presented to you, except it will use uh, the uh, different retrieval mechanisms like BM25, which is derivative of time frequency and those document frequency. Uh, well, as I said, I wanted to handcraft my own relevance uh, and that's why I built this um, uh, knowledge uh, graph pipeline where we map it to things and then we store it in uh, radius graph. Any more questions or deep dive requests? Um, Pierre said he, he doesn't necessarily have a query, but a following up question on the results, which is <laughs> how would you interpret the resulting graph? Well, uh, so I'm not medic, the resulting graph should be interpreted by medic. Uh, yeah, and I think that's where is a, um, so uh, keep in mind, it's a hackathon project, it's not a finished product. 
I wanted to uh, present results in three dimensional and virtual reality. I understand a lot of people like to have a standard Google's uh, uh, spreadsheet like output uh, or two dimensional um, uh, graph. Um, uh, and this is a, the presentation of this graph requires an additional work. And to make it practically useful, you need to work with a stakeholder uh, who will be interpreted uh, this graph. So no medical professional, professor, professionals were engaged during hackathon. I'm open to suggestions how to improve it. How to interpret it right now is, uh, it is a technology demo. Think about it like Engelbart's demo in 1975. Uh, these things can be done using current technology. So uh, that is node out of UMLS. Yeah, And the, if I click on node, it gives me the uh, concept unify identifier, which we can go and fetch from uh, US government's uh, website. Uh, edge is the list of titles. Uh, which is probably similar to what most people uh, would like to uh, see as an output. Uh, and obviously there is a work with progresses. You potentially should be able to move it through roles because at different time you can have a different role, uh, but that's whole other topic of exploration. And just to illustrate the um, so event, uh, yeah, generic word, and it have a very specific meaning I'll have to log in uh, eventually. Uh, if I'm lucky, then we'll be able to see it. Yeah, and event is related to disease or syndrome rather than very uh, uh, generic event because I narrow down the dictionary uh, from high level uh, concepts to something which uh, medical professions can relate to. Uh, but um, yeah, so uh, relevance, particular for specialized field, is the uh, uh, not currently solved problem. Yeah, so all current tools are um, and the question uh, of usefulness. Because if you put the same terms into Google, uh, you probably will not necessarily reach meaningful results. Uh, does it answer question or shall we go deeper into any topic? Pierre, would you be able to... Right. Yes, Pierre said, thank you for the answer about how to interpret the results. Congratulations on the work. <laughs> um, I would like to highlight one thing in terms of visualization. So we're actually quite familiar with uh, word of cloud um, and two-dimensional visualizations of text. And uh, uh, what I want to show, if I'll manage to uh, not to break it, is that uh, in two dimension, uh, it looks like a soup, yeah? Uh, but when you um, add the third dimension, you can actually see some patterns. And I think um, a lot of our hardware supports three-dimensional visualization uh, for the last 10 years, except we've given it to gamers and uh, to gaming community to play the, uh, rather than using it for ourselves. Uh, so uh, it's nearly there. Yeah, so when you're using Word of Cloud, you have a, probably this type of view. Yeah, and then you slice it uh, using different things, uh, uh, different uh, filters. Uh, but what is actually behind is a completely different structure, the one which you can see uh, different patterns. So uh, because it's how does temperature and humidity affect it, you can see the temperature and uh, humidity uh, are more visible as a pattern than supernode. I'm sure, yes, there are other layouts which we employ for force directed graphs in two dimension. Um, my uh, other ask of people, try to think what is your multidimensional representation? And let's try to keep it at least in 3D, but if we'll manage to get it into virtual reality, we will not be limited by the 
um, desktop space and you can just turn uh, your head around to look at other things. Right. I run out of things I wanted to say. I thought uh, we uh, will be talking longer as uh, it's interactive session. We are quite happy to um, continue interaction in, uh, uh, in open table. Yes, I, I think quite a lot of people seem to be joining uh, on Matrix by chat. Uh, so they're only viewing the, the, the stream. So I think it's probably better for us to to move i will signpost the session that you have already like registered in the open space mm -hmm. and um so and then i will post that over here so that everybody can be there and chat in a more informal fashion okay yeah. and i will also post all of these links because the slides are already online and uh, mm -hmm. you've uploaded them so i'll post all the slide there as well and all of the links that you mentioned, I will also post it there so people can have easy access. Brilliant. Thank you, Raquel. All right. Great. That was a great session. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, pleasure. Mm. OK. Thank you. Mm. OK, so thank, that's thank the end of our interactive session. And thank you very much.